morning, fellow zombies. Sleep deprived and emotionally screwed up like the rest of us. It's 12.29 in the a.m. West Coast time. It's the 16th of January, 2024. Here's zombie Weaver John C. Roseman, California. And don't mind me, I am just sanguine about situations and things happening that eras and things they used to be have just shut down and disappeared. Kind of sucks, I'll tell you that much. It does. I was going over the tubes again. Channel 4, K, um, NBC Los Angeles was doing a basically a memorial for the Orange Mall out in Orange County. They've got until January 31st well, the store owners do to evacuate. To get out. Because they're shutting down and eventually it'll be turned into something else. Probably a huge parking lot or something. I haven't seen what it looks like. I saw the story. There was like some reactions to it. I believe it's called the uh, North Orange Mall out in Orange. It's a huge complex that they got out there. But unfortunately, the internals, they're going to be shut down like crazy. So I don't know what the property owner is going to be doing this to this one. I mean, the place has been open since I was born. Well, 50 years anyway, but it's closing down permanently. We didn't hear about it until last night. I did a little story about that in the evening news, besides all the damn politics and everything else going on. But this place had been open for a long while. Do you know what it's like, a mall? Generation Zers wouldn't know that much, except if the malls are still available and open and they'll be walking around the places wondering what the hell this place is open for since we've got online shopping like Amazon and companies such and such. Some larger corporations had to diversify. Had to get their product out one way or another so online shopping. During the COVID nightmare that we've had it changed our shopping habits entirely. We became dependent upon delivery systems. We became uh, more heavily involved with the shipping than we had walking around malls or stores that we used to. And perros. If we had the money, we'd, got, we'd get stuff. Or just afford for a little bite to eat in a little restaurant or somewhere. Malls were an experience. For the Gen Xers, if you want to call it that way. Mall brats. That would be it. We were considered mall brats. We'd go into the huge enclosed place. And they would have things that would catch our attentions. They would have delicacies to partake in. We would have, excuse me, I gotta get this damn thing fixed on this chair. Hickory Farms and their smells or Seas Candies or popcorn machines. Um, little licorice. We would have tasting areas. And then again, we would have a bit of food courts here and there, or specialty restaurants. 
Some restaurants will be there for about 20, 30 years before they move off, or longer than that. If the mall had been new, had been in longer than 40 or 50 years without shutting down, it was considered a classic, except when they went through renovations and had to go through negotiations of their leases. And then the companies running them would either have to agree to it or move on. It also would include their buildings surrounding the malls. If one would look at Google Maps, oh yeah, take a look at Google Maps. Just go about your nor your uh, major mall in your area. You would see a, a, an industrial complex out there, built for customer service. Maybe a few areas that would actually would have industry in there, buildings. Uh, that would house companies to produce materials. But for the rest of it, it's all customer service. We service the public. We service people coming in, in whatever form or fashion. You want a new racket? We got a sports center for that. You want a movie? Maybe there's a movie theater in, your, in, in the area for that. You want uh, arcades? We'll have that too. You want a quiet place to read a book? Well, I don't know about that anymore. But they used to be. They used to be. If you wanted a five and dime, oh, they're mutated into something else. But they're no longer a five and they're no longer a dime. No longer the, the uh, counters of, of a restaurant in there either. I J.J. Newberry was one, and Woolworth was the other. For me, living in the San Fernando Valley, we had several malls. We had strip malls, but mostly we had the majors. The one of them I grew up with in North Hollywood was uh, Valley Plaza, Laurel Canyon, and Van Allen. Actually, the, uh, uh, Victory, actually. In that area would be about a couple of miles worth, or maybe more than that, of retail in area. Complete with a movie theater out there, banking industry. You have your major department stores, five and dimes. You would have a market out in the area. There were specialty stores out there to that would almost satisfy your every need. Even if you wanted to get a corned beef on rye. Or if you wanted to get a blitz. You want to get a specialized cookie. If you wanted fast food, uh, not much. Except for some of the stores on the outlying areas of the mall. At least in those days, anyway. But if you wanted cafeteria food, we had a cafeteria out in the area. We would have a pet shop. We would have a few diners in the area. We would have the areas that kids would come through just to check the things out. We would have parents take a weekly trip sometimes to get grocery supplies, or just to check things out. Sears was one of those places, or um, May Company was one of those places. <laughs> May Company was right by the Hollywood Freeway, if I'm not mistaken. Had its own shopping mall right there, Laurel Canyon Plaza. We would have ice skating rinks in there. We would have re full-size restaurants in there. We would have bookstores in there. We would have uh, sampler foods in there. And the smell of popcorn is all around. We had. I hadn't been in the Sherman Oaks Fashion Square during those days. It was just. I don't know. I felt like it was just too stuffy. But get me over to Sepulveda and Ventura. Right by the 405 freeway. And you would have the Sherman Oaks 
Galleria, otherwise called back in the 80s or 70s to 80s, or quite a kid. We called it the Val Gal, about three or four story of uh, fun. Well, it's for shoppers and teenagers to hang out in anyway. Teenagers to work out and hang out. I mean, the teenage jobs would be all over the place. Store clerks working in a movie theater inside the place. Not to mention fast food areas. When you saw fast food, when you fa saw Fast Times at Ridgemount High, the movie. I know they showed on the outside of a different mall area, but on the inside it was the Sherman Oaks Galleria, the Val Gal. It was a signature place to hang out. That's a rich mall for me. It was my place to hang out. I had two or three bookstores in there. I was a bookworm. What the hell? I got Crown in there hiding out about it. Wal uh, Walden Books. H.B. Dalton's. And then they moved out, but you had the uh, bookstore getting in there. Uh, Borders, actually. Borders had a lot. Until they went away. <sighs> kind of sucks. 94 earthquake, 1994 earthquake, January 17th. Devastated much of the landscaping, not to mention the stores we had. But the ones that actually had a bit of more protection for the earthquake, they withstood it. But the malls took a hit. They all did in the valley. I heard the bag I had to be rebuilt, and so had uh, Fallbrook, not to mention the promenade. I heard stories about that. More renovations were happening right after the earthquake because they want to make sure that the malls were going to last, but some of the owners bugged out. They bugged out. I worked as a temporary in that area. It was a there was a sandwich shop in there one could go into and get a nice juicy corned beef on rye or a pastrami or even matzo ball soup. Of course, you had the McDonald's invasion in there. If that wasn't bad enough across the street, there was another McDonald's standalone. Northridge Mall, actually, before the 94 quake hit, they had what they called the GMC Theater, General Movie Cinema. And yes, teenagers also ran the place. But you'd see your first run or second runs in there. I love a way to spend an afternoon, that's for darn sure. You'd go out for ice cream because there would be a basket of robins nearby, and if you wanted uh, Tommy Burgers or something, a, a substitute for that. We had a Tommy's in there. We'd had uh, fashion places in there for people to shop. All shapes and sizes. And we had your specialty knick-knack areas like Spencer's, Game Cracks, and whatnots. But the thing is, it was a place to hang out. Besides food courts, it was just checking out people left and right, up and down the t up and down the tiers. You wanted to see action. You wanted to see people just having a good time, or just walking aimlessly because they're li reliving memories, or trying to find one particular store in mind. Places to sit and just watch this stuff. You could people watch all day. As long as you kept buying merchandise, like uh, if you want to keep being soldiers and stuff, just to prove that you're a customer. I really had it. Really had a pocketbook with with coins in it. You go to the local arcade inside the malls and really hammer it out.
the 94 earthquake when it hit did a lot of red redecorating in the whole place the tier system that they actually had in the Sherman Oaks Galleria crushed they had a redecor they had to redesign the whole mall in there I'd seen that what it looked like right after the 94 quake and all the reconstruction did it for about a year, year and a half on the damn thing. It was uglier than crap. <laughs> Some of the, the stores I used to know are gone forever, and so does the movie theater. Thrashed. Gone. Company bankrupt or something. Even the Northridge Mall was the same damn way. There are different areas of the whole place that they really had to redesign the whole thing. Some of the stores, the major anchors were there, but the buildings were pretty much messed up. And the parking structures that they had outside the uh, levels collapse, crunch, ugly. But the era of going into a mall, of just being a kid or being someone just bored out of their mind, just to have an experience in a mall, of walking around. There was even um, exercise groups that would go around in different areas. Walk around the entire mall, speed walk or slow walk, but get their exercise early in the morning. They would meet in groups. Get access into the mall by by security who would know them, and they'd walk around the mall, just make it into a racetrack. I tell my mom sometimes when I was a kid, I was going to the mall. We went to the mall. My family would go to the mall, but sometimes I'd go to the mall alone with my friends, take our bikes, ride all the way over to the Northridge Mall. It was home. Well, not exactly home, but it was familiar territory during those days. We felt safe to a point. I mean, we did have law enforcement in the area. LAPD had their own substation in there. Mall security was walking around. I really didn't feel like it was just nothing. I didn't feel the same way when I walked around Topanga or Fallbrook didn't have the feeling for it. Promenade, well, it was just there. Not just you know, any other place. But it kind of sucked. It kind of sucked that I had to look at the stuff and just get totally whacked out. Every time I kept saying that there was a mall shutting down, it upset me a great deal because being part of the history of it, being part of the mystery of it, being part of it, period. It just hurt like hell. I can do Google Earth Pro, an old program I've got on my computer here. I'm trying to get into the timeline right now. Of what it would look like back then. Our hardest damn thing is to look at the past on that one because I'm looking at things that used to be and I could slide the scale as far back as I can see the changes that's happened back in 1989 if I scroll this thing back and I'd look at the Northridge Mall. 
I could tell you that the thing looked whole, totally different. Totally different. I could tell you at the far end, the south end of the valley, of the of the mall itself, had Sears. There would have been bullocks on the upper northeast corner of it. On the northwest area, that would have been the eatery areas and the movie theaters. I think J.C. Penney's was part of that too. But for the outer portions of it, it was just all covered parking. They had an automotive center outside of Sears. People would go out to get their cars fixed left and right on that area. I can scroll a little bit using this date to see about my old stomping grounds out in North Hollywood. It's black and white grainy. But even then, I would be able to see what I used to live and what I used to have fun in. Some of the places. There had been a park that was right behind Laurel Plaza. A, greener, a strip of greenery. And playgrounds right just before the freeway. It was basically their recreation area of North Hollywood. They would almost have like a cloverleaf situation of getting on and off in the area. But going back into time, just looking on the outskirts of it, and just focusing in, Looks a hell of a lot different than it was right now. Because most of that area that I said from, uh, let's see, there was a side street of, what the hell was that? Hamlin? Was it Hamlin? Could have been Hamlin. We didn't have Hamlin in that time, did we? Probably. Yeah, it was Hamlin. Yeah. Okay, from Hamlin towards Kittredge, right on the western edge of it, I'm looking at the 1989 version of the thing, I see the parking lots, I see the huge strip mall, I mean it's just a huge long ass mall, people would be walking up and back on that one. There'd be smaller restaurants and smaller shops in the back. There would have been, um, well, since Sears is over there, they would also have uh, Sears Automotive Center in there. Every time there was a Sears, there was an Automotive Center in there. But these days, between Kittredge and Hamlin, and I think a little up, they got a, a school in there. I mean, they chopped this thing up like fish bait. But back then, it was a happening area. Now, scrolling down south, still using a 1989 map, I could still see some of the stores still active during those days. Smaller mom and pops along Victory Boulevard. And the movie theater that was all along, uh, was that Bellinger? No, Bellingame. Yeah. There's still a tall building over there that keeps shifting its... Uh, mirror all around every so often when there was something happening they'd put up a new mural or something on it savings and loan I guess scrolling southward on it and here's where I discovered that memories do suck and they hurt like hell see right along the freeway they have Laurel Grove Park Stretching out and down a bit. Just following the contours of the freeway. Well, when you're on the 
170 Hollywood Freeway going south or north on it. The May Company building had on its top floor, they had this edifice that had the M glowing all four directions. And on its south side of it was the Laurel Plaza. My brother had worked there before, during, and uh, I'm not quite sure, right after the damn earthquake in 94. But that particular mall there collapsed everywhere. They had the ice machines, uh, Zambonis, ruined, crushed because of the weight of the roof. And the ice underneath melted and flooded the entire area. Roof collapsed. Um, it just went... <laughs> animals died in a damn thing. Their security guards had issues over there. In the end, they had to demolish the whole thing. The Westfield property at the time, the management company, decided they weren't going to rebuild. They were just going to destroy the mall, but keep the, but keep the retail place. Until they sold it off, and the whole area became, I don't know what the hell it is anymore. But it's a new construction. Been out there for about 15, 20 years. There's been a lot of changes in the San Fernando Valley that I'm not happy with. Now, if I really wanted to get to looking at the... I'm still looking at the 1989 picture of how things were changed and how things had really hurt like hell. And they did. They did hurt like hell watching this stuff. Because I'd seen how things had changed drastically that I couldn't even recognize it anymore. The 405 change. Um, going through Ventura. Trying to see the mall. When you're on the 405 freeway, even today you'd see the mall or office buildings when you're in the Ventura uh, corridor area. Back in 89, before the damn earthquake hit, there it was. The Valgal. Complete with covered parking. This was... This was the Valley Hangout. This was the Valley Hangout during those days. This is what they called the Valley Gal. This is what they made the some of those movies back in the 80s for. And there was a song concerning about the Valley Girl. Moon Unit Zappa grew up out there. She was Valley. Her father, God rest his soul, was Frank Zappa. See, I'm starting to feel more and more out of tune with today. The more I remember the old days and the quote-unquote how fun they were, the more out of place in space and time that I am. Because I no longer recognize the places that I used to go to or enjoy. Or even try to understand one damn thing about it. I would see on the old pictures on Google Earth places I used to visit or get past. Hell, there'd be stores I used to hear of and 
went shopping at or worked at. I didn't work at the at the mall of or or at Topanga or Promenade. That weren't my hangouts, but they were hangouts. The malls were considered hangouts. In the days of the eighties and nineties, when we actually oh seventies as well, we actually valued the brick and mortars. They weren't just for commerce, they were for hanging out. And it drove me crazy thinking about that kind of stuff. What was even worse was that I kept looking at some of the things that uh, I used to really part, be part of or had seen and not quite sure if I actually was part of it or not. Old aerospace companies that used to be in the area. You used to have Rocketdyne. Rocketdyne. I remember they used to have the old space shuttle engines that you manufactured over there. They kept it out in the front of their building on Kawanga. Not, not Kawanga, but uh, Kanoga. Almost close to victory. Building's no longer there. It changed into something else throughout the decades. And Rocketdyne had to move operations or do something with their area. I've been out of touch with the valley for so damn long. I don't know what's happened anymore. If I happen to look at the Google Maps, I'm like lost already. Places I used to use for landmarks, no longer there. Places I used to enjoy, no longer there. So it kind of sucks. When you get older and you start thinking about these places that one would go to and, and have fun at, and then feel like, what the hell happened? You changed, you mutated, you something else happened. So everything else just fell out of favor and fell out of things. Much like when you go to your beloved malls, and you used to do that. I did. There were certain malls my brother and I and my family would go to, actually. There'd be like a, an eatery that we went to, hometown buffet. But we would also peruse the area as well. But not as much as we should have. I mean, there have been other areas that we should have seen and, and gone to, but we didn't. What I'm trying to look for right now is Fallbrook. Fallbrook Mall is the place I was talking about. And since I see the uh, avenue, I used to work across the street from it. Temp, but you know, one's got to earn money anyway one way or another. So I guess I'm a little out of it. I guess I see it other places that changed on me so much that my landmarks suck. Okay, between Van Owen and Victory, that's where it was. All right, that's what I wanted to find out. How it used to be back then. I know, it's the old fort talking here. Yeah, I try to keep these things about 30 minutes roughly, so I'll be doing another moderate thing here.